And good evening, everyone, and welcome as tonight it's Dow High against Bay City Central. Morning, uh, Coach. It's kind of a rainy, drizzly night out there, but a lot of excitement. This is a big night for Dow High School. Well, you know, two weeks ago, Dow played in the rain, and it didn't slow them down at all. They had a, an easy victory. The game was over by halftime. Uh, I think their attack is, is such that it's pretty versatile. They can run. They can pass. They have an excellent kick game. So I think that they're going to be able to handle any bad weather that we have. But this weather really favors Bay City Central, who has primarily a, a run game uh, and the ability maybe to keep the ball away from Dow. It's a rejuvenated Bay City Central team. They've uh, had a tough time for the last four or five years, but they've come out with three wins this season. And like you said, they're going to be a pretty formidable opponent tonight. Well, well they're hoping for a winning season. And, uh, and, and along with a winning season, a win tonight might even give them a 6-3 and three season which would get them into the playoffs. So they, they have a lot to play for tonight. And, of course, they love playing Dow High. Now, we're going to call up some keys to tonight's game um, and try to take a look at some of the things that both teams, I think, have to do to win the ball game. First off, for Bay City Central, they have to run the ball. If they can run the ball on Dow, and this is where, if there's any weakness in Dow, it's it's the ability to stop the run. And the the... One of the things that happens is Dow has this lightning attack, and they get so far in front of you that you're forced to play catch-up ball instead of letting the ball game come back to you. I think Basie Central is going to be one of those teams. Basie Central has to avoid a shootout. They cannot compete if Dow has that lightning attack. And finally, Basie Central has to find number 22. Caleb Richard is a real football player and a, and a potential first-team All-Stater. For, for Dow High... They have to stay on the attack. They have to just keep pressing the issue with Bay City Central. Bay City Central does not tackle well in the secondary. Bay City Central does not cover well in the secondary. It'll be interesting to see what kind of coverage they're going to have. They have to control Bay City Central's run game. They have to stop it as it goes. And Dow, all year long, has been very, very successful because they get good field position. The other team will make a mistake. They will overthrow a pass. Uh, they get a three and out. It's, it's that kind of thing, and they get good field position, and they have an excellent um, special teams. So those are the things I think we have to see tonight, Sid, but it'll be a, I think it'll be a good game. It should be a good – we'll see what happens at halftime But because uh, Dow has just blown everybody out by halftime. Well, they have, and this is uh, the first time that Dow can clinch back-to-back uh, -back playoff berths. Uh, for the first time since 2005, 2006, it's an offensive juggernaut for this team. It, it is. They just they love to to score. They they know. You know, I always say you can always tell a good team because they know where the end zone is. Here's the Dow High Band and tonight's national anthem. about set for tonight's kickoff. Dow coming off a 41 to 21 victory over Flint Powers last week, so they're on a roll and I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, coach, but I believe that this is the first time Jason Watkins has had a 5 and 0 start. First time he's had a 5 and 0 start, right? And uh, th that playoff berth, first off, to be 5 and 0 at this point is wonderful. Uh, to, to get the next four are always just a little bit tougher. But if they win tonight, they clinch a playoff spot and that and uh, you know, that gets the momentum to maybe uh, win the league and uh, hopefully keep on going, although basically Central is not a league game. 
So we're just going to take a look at this and, and kind of hope for the best for the Chargers uh, and see what Bay City Central has to offer. You know, last week, I just thinking about this uh, today, last week that was really a close football game, and then all of a sudden, in the midway of the second quarter, Dow scored four touchdowns in a very short span of time, and that really kind of put the game away. So that's what I'm saying, this lightning attack, and you just have to, you have to be able to withstand it. If you're, if you're the opposing team, you have to say to your players, something's going to happen. Now, how, do you, how are you, you going to respond to that? How are you going to respond? When they score, how are you going to respond? And if you don't respond, they'll score again, and they'll score again and again and again. So, you, so we'll, we'll be able to see this situation unfold and you pretty much tell you the whole story of the ball game when it happens. It's going to happen. And, of course, uh, Jason Watkins, a head coach at Dow High School and an co old colleague of yours, Morley Frazier, who's been at uh, Bay City Central forever. Well, Jason was my captain in 1990. He played center for me. And, uh, and Morley, yes, we've known Morley for a long time. Great games. Andrew Kern there, number four for Bay City Central, has it teed up for the Wolves, and he'll kick it away as Dow will receive the opening kickoff as we have a pretty strong wind blowing from your left to your right as Kern gets a low line drive into it, fielded at the five-yard line, and here come the Chargers on the attack and up across the 20 to the 25 and still loose at the 26-yard line for the Chargers is Johnny Wilson, so that's where Dow will scrimmage for the first time, first and ten. Johnny Wilson is one of my most favorite players on this team. I like to see Johnny Wilson get a little more playing time. He's exciting. He can run. He can, uh, he can take punts and kickoffs back. He's an excellent receiver and a, and a very good runner. As you can see right there, he returned it uh, in good field position. This, to me, is good field position Anytime you get to the 30-yard line out. 32-yard line is where the Chargers will scrimmage with Alec Marty, the quarterback, in the gun. Takes a snap, flare out to the left, and here comes a big gain across the 35-40, and on his way across midfield and deep into Bay City Central territory goes the receiver for the Chargers, Caleb Richard, who is uh, also a pretty darn good running back. Here's an example of Caleb Richard catching the football on a little flare, great blocking on Dow's uh, perimeter, and now here's where Caleb... See him, he'll, that little burst and stiff arm, he makes, he makes things happen. 26-yard pickup and the first first down of the ball game for the Chargers as they move from the Bay City Central 42-yard line. And again, Richard in the backfield comes in motion to the near side and now takes the handoff, and it's a reverse. And coming to the near side across the 45 and down to the 40-yard line, for a short gain that time for the Chargers. So it'll be second down and about eight. Excellent, excellent uh, protection on the back side by Bay City Central. They, they stayed home and made a play happen. Uh, so Dow, uh, razzle -dazzle there. I was gonna say Dow is showing that they're not afraid to a little razzle dazzle here early in the ball game. But a short gain, second down and eight. Marty straight back this time, looking downfield, goes over the middle and hits his big receiver, Rob, inside the 25 down to the 23-yard line. It's Mike Rob. He's a big one, 6'6", 200-pound junior. Here's another replay on this, and you'll see Rob gets in the slot right in that open seam of the zone. And, see, if Bay City Central is not going to react better than that, then they're going to leave that open all night. They're playing a three-deep zone with two under, so it's... Uh, it's going to be a rough night for them if they can't react any better. High snap brought down by Marty and handed off to Richard, who gets inside the 20 and down near the 15-yard line for a good pickup of about eight yards that time. Caleb Richard coming into this ball game, 58 carries for 499 yards. Frank, that's an 8.6 average every time he touches I the ball. I think every time he touches the ball, he's going to score. I mean, I, I, I would be scared if if I'm the defensive coach trying to stop him because that's why I say you have to find him and get somebody on him. Second down and two, and Richard gets the handoff heading to the far side across the 10, the He's five, in. heading for the end zone touchdown. But there is a flag on the far side of the field, and we'll see if one of the Dow players may have come up with an infraction trying to clear the way for Caleb Richard. It's usually either holding or blocking the back. So we'll go down to the field, and uh, it is going to be against the Chargers, so we'll wipe out that touchdown. 
and penalize Dow a couple of yards. Shouldn't be any big deal, though, for the Chargers, the way they're moving the ball right now. This is, this is what I call lightning. They, they move the ball quickly. That, that's a big penalty. And this is why Coach Morley Frazier of the Wolves wants to keep the ball away from the Chargers as much as he can. He hasn't had an opportunity yet. But it will be interesting when they get the ball to see if they can uh, mount some sustained drives and keep the ball out of the hands of these fast Dow backs receivers and quarterback Alec Marty. First and goal from the Charger for the Chargers at about the 10 yard line as the snap goes back to Marty and he hands off to Caleb Richard going to the right side again inside the 10, but he's met at about the seven yard line for a short gain that time. We mentioned uh, Caleb Richards' rushing ability, but you also pointed out a great receiver, too, 22 receptions this He's year. An excellent all-around football player. 5'11", 195-pound junior. He'll be back next year. Second down and goal from about the seven-yard line for the Chargers, and here's Marty. Swings it out to Richard on the near side, trying to cut it back. Gets hemmed in by the Wolves' defense at about the 11-yard line, so he's going to lose a few yards. Good pursuit that time by Central. Well, I think you're going to see that little slant play again to uh, Rob. Third down now still for the there. Chargers. Still there. Basically, Central is playing in, a, in this uh, three-deep zone, and I mean it, it's deep. So we'll see what the Chargers come up with. 9.01 left here in the first period. First uh, drive of the night for the Chargers, and they moved it down smartly to the central 12-yard line, but have a third down and long here. And the pitch comes back to Richard around the near, near side, has some blocking, cuts it inside across the five and down to about the one-yard line. Should be enough for a first down. Depends on the spot. Nice recognition of his blocking that time by Caleb Richard as he pick the precise correct moment to make his cut fourth and a foot fourth and a yard so fourth down and we'll see what uh, the coaching staff for Dow comes up with I'll tell you the, the real secret to Dow's success although they, they have some talented players is the blocking downfield by their wide receivers it's Incredible. been very evident very yeah. evident and very uh, uh, exceptional here in the early going And now we're going to get an encroachment penalty coming up, I believe, against Bay City as their defensive lineman looked like he moved and may have made contact with the uh, right guard for Dow. And that will produce a first down. First down on uh, the short penalty, but enough to get Dow with a new fresh set of downs. So the Chargers now down to the Wolves' one-yard line. Richard, the setback behind quarterback Alec Marty gets the handoff. There's some Wolves waiting for it, but Caleb Richard just bounces not, off a couple of players and denied. gets it into the end zone for the touchdown. A very impressive one-yard run that time for Dow's first touchdown. He was not to be denied. It was a beautiful run. Here's our, here's our replay on that. You see he's going to get hit early, and then there's the first tackle that he skips out of. There's the second tackle that he powers through and falls into the end zone. He, he does know where the end zone is. That was Kyle Nearing that had his hands wrapped around Richard but just couldn't hang on long enough. And now Max Kidd will come on to attempt the point after. That's the 12th touchdown of the year for Caleb Richard. And the point after by Kidd is up and it is good. And with seven minutes and 51 seconds left in the first period, the Chargers have struck first and lead the Bay City Central Wolves by a score of 7-0. Well, here's the bad news. The bad news is Bay City Central is down 7-0. The good news for Bay City Central is it took Dow, the, that's the longest it's taken Dow to score on their opening drive. They scored every other opening drive within two minutes, three minutes. So this, this is uh, good for Bay City. Slow the game down. For, now, how are they going to respond? What is the response to Bay City Central? Are they going to come out fleeing the ball? 
or are they going to come out trying to power up down? That was a good point that you made before the game started because that is really, in essence, what it's all about. We know Dow is going to score, but it's how does Bay City answer? So Kidd will do the kicking chores. He's had a pretty good record this year. About 50% or so of his uh, kicks make it into the end zone, but he's kicking a pretty stiff breeze in his face at this point. By the way, uh, I think I mentioned that was Caleb Richards' 12th touchdown of the year. He leads the league in scoring. And now Kidd has it teed up. And Kidd approaches. And it's an onside kick, and let's see on the far side of the field. Looks Dow's like it's recovered it. by Dow. Dow's got it. Dow tried that two weeks ago, and the outside guy just let the ball go out of bounds. Tonight, the outside guy made a great play and picked it up. Watch it again. Watch how the outside guy is going to keep the ball in play. Looked like Jared Muhammad. You might keep yep. your eye on him. Number six for the Chargers, who will uh, make the recovery if we get the replay Nobody here. Well, Dow's, Dow's going to go ahead and uh, put it back in play as they have a first down with that recovery at the 46 the of Bay City Central. It's called quads left, and usually it ends up being a touchdown for Dow. Here's Marty going over the middle, and it's intercepted. Oh, wow. And returned across the 40, the 45, and still on his feet and out of bounds at the 47-yard line is Kyle Nearing, and uh, Kyle kind of paying the Chargers back for missing That's, that tackle. This is something we don't see very often. Usually I've seen when they've been in this quad, that tight bunch quad, is that they throw the ball far, and then tonight they just threw the it in that little slant, and the linebacker Girls dropped Gold, right into it. Well, Kyle Nearing picked it off. He's a 5'8", 156-pound senior for the Wolves, goes both ways. And so our first look at the Wolves' offense as they'll put it in play from the Dow 47-yard line. Their quarterback is Dominic Zanotti. What a good name for a quarterback. Well, that's, uh, you know, uh, Dow's had families called the Parmalees. Midlands had families called the Money. Basie Central's had the Zanottis. And they've been a real family uh, for Bay City. Jared Brown, who has been a star of late for the Wolves, gets the first carry and gets it down to the 40-yard line, so a nice pickup of about seven yards for Brown. Second down and three for the Wolves as Zanotti comes into the huddle. Zanotti is a 6'2", 177-pound junior. And last week, Coach, he had a pretty good week, 13 out of 18 for 119 yards and a touchdown. Well, he's got good family background. Hand off to Billet, and Billet gets across the 40 down to about the 38. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down as the clock ticks with 6.55 left to go in the first period. So third down and about one. And this is that crucial point here if Bay City Central can keep the ball and keep it away from right, the Chargers' right. offense. This is, a, this is definitely a first down attempt. On the Chargers' 38 yard line try and uh, get the Chargers, some of their players on defense here in just a moment. But you might see Spencer Hurlbut here on the uh, near side. As Zanotti hands off, no, he keeps it behind Brown and crosses the 35 and picks up the first down. So the first first down of the ball game for the Wolves just inside the Dow 35 yard line. This is exactly what Basie Central wants to do. Slow the game down. Look how long it's taking them to send in the play, uh, run the play, and then after the play's over, get back into the huddle. It's, it's really a slow down process, which I think is very smart. It is, I mean, you gotta keep the ball away from that potent offense, and so far they're doing a good job of it as Nathan Anthony splits out to the far side for the Wolves, and Zanotti again taking his time as he gets up to the line of scrimmage. Now throwing out to the far side to Anthony and he completes. No, it's just knocked out of his hands at the last moment on a good defensive play by the Chargers' Jared Mohammed. So nice the pass touch. in nice uh, touch. pass incomplete. And watch here as uh, good reactions out of Mohammed. He got in there at the last second, reached his hand in and pulled it away. 
That's how you used to Very use, good you play. used to teach it, isn't it? I usually <laughs> taught. Hold on, grab them. <laughs> Don't let them score. Second down and ten for the Wolves at the Chargers' 35-yard line. Billet the deep set back. Gets the handoff across the 40, the 35, still on his feet, down to about the 28-yard line. So we'll pick up of about eight yards that time for Billet. Now, you watch Billet run. He's running straight up and down. It's a little trap play. Base, uh, Dow let the trap go, and Billet just pushed the, line, the defensive guy away, Max Kidd. Billet is a good runner. He's, he's got... Uh, uh, over the year, 252 yards and four touchdowns. Brendan Mulligan now has checked in as the uh, tailback for Bay City Central as they look at a third and three inside the 30-yard line, and the handoff goes instead to Jared Brown, the fullback, who just powers his way inside the 25 and should have a first down at about the 24-yard line. He's a load coach, 5'10", 216 pounds, and just came up to the varsity recently as a sophomore. I think they're going. This is exactly what Basie Central wants to do. Uh, the intercepted pass affected field position for them, gave them very favorable field position, and right now they are going to pound the football and say to Dow, "Okay, you know I'm going to keep the ball away from you as long as I can." This is exactly what they want to do. We talked about this. Uh, this the ability to run the ball. Following that interception, they've moved the ball to the Dow 24-yard line, and the handoff this time goes to Mulligan, and Mulligan fighting his way for yardage down to about the 20. Good hard run that time by Brendan Mulligan. Ball carried by number 12, Taven Wilson for the Wolves. Mulligan is a 5'7", 166-pound junior. Mulligan's a good runner. I mean, I, he doesn't have the numbers that the others have, but I think he's he's got 227 yards, three touchdowns. But he has the ability to break it. You the, know, other, got, the others have the ability to break you. They've got three runners with over 200 yeah. yards, so they can go to uh, any of a host of backs to try and pick up the yardage. And this time the fake is to Brown, and uh, or I guess the handoff is to Brown. I thought he pulled it out. But Brown got the call and got down near first down yardage. We'll see where they spot it. It's close to the 15-yard line, just inside the 15. And they're going to call for a measurement on the far side with three minutes and 49 seconds left in the ball game. Coach, i got to ask you, Jason Watkins, I uh, was talking to him earlier this week, and uh, he was talking exactly the same way that you did. You know, we, we've, we've got to somehow control that line of scrimmage and uh, keep them from keeping the ball from us. And that's exactly what the plan is. Actually, I was really surprised that they opened that, uh, that session there with a pass down the sideline because that just falls right into what Dow wants you to do. Yep. This is not what Dow wants you to do, and that is be able to pound them. So it's a third down play, third down just inside the 15-yard line. As the Chargers jumping out to a 7-0 lead, now they're calling on their defense to try and stop this Wolves drive that began after an interception. Zanotti on the quarterback sneak straight ahead, should have it as he moves the pile down to about the 10-yard line. Good push that time by the interior of the Wolves offensive line. I will say this, that I can see where Dow really misses one of their key players, Skyler Contari, who was their leading tackler up until the time he got injured. And I can see the difference here. You know, if a team was able to run the football, Skylar Contari came up and made the tackle. That's not happening right now. Dow's doing a lot of arm tackling right now on his big Bay City backs. Ball is at the 10 yard line, first down. And the handoff this time is to Billet and Billet finds a little hole over the right side and works it down to about the seven yard line. So it's going to be second down. By number seven, Joshua Ballette for the Wolves. Brought down by number 54, Brad Drinkbull for the Ballette Chargers. is a six-foot, 186-pound senior, came into this ball game with 252 yards rushing on 38 carries. That's a 6.6 .6 average, but he's just powering straight ahead behind that big offensive line of his. This time in, split on both sides of the field. Second down and eight. 
Pass play over the middle and into the end zone for the touchdown as Dominic Zanotti hooks up with Nathan Anthony for the touchdown. And with the point after to come, the Wolves have tied this one up. Beautiful slant pattern. Uh, the inside safety gets lost. He comes up, you see right there, uh, number seven kid bites on the fake and next thing you know they're in there. Anthony came into the game with 17 receptions for 215 yards. And now Kern will attempt the extra point. Kick is up and good. And with two minutes, 32 seconds left, the Bay City Central Wolves have tied the Dow Chargers at 7-7 here in the first period. I watched Kern in practice earlier. Uh, he was good. kicking from 30 Three yards. So that's, uh, he's, he's got a pretty good leg. Well, with a break in the action, folks, uh, I want to remind you that you're watching this Bay City Central Dow High homecoming game on MCTV. Messages on Charter Communications Cable Channel 189 here in Midland. You can also find MPS TV under Channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. This game will be telecast on the following dates and times, Friday, October 3rd at 11.30 p.m., Saturday, October the 4th, and Sunday, October the 5th at both 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., more dates and times to follow next week on MPS TV 190. Check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org. Coverage of this program was made possible in part with a donation from M Cafe and Foxcroft Friends of MCTV. Here's Kern now with the kickoff, and it's along the ground, picked up at the 18-yard line, and Mohammed has it across the, fifth, or the 25 and gets up to about the 27 before he's wrestled down. Well, I don't understand that. I have, if, if I have the wind and I have a good kicker, kick return I want to kick it as far down there as I can. Target. Now, he may have missed that one, but uh, First and ten for the that's an opportunity for them lost because that still gives Dow 28-yard line. That's, that's all right to start with. Start the inside like the 20 is what you don't want to do. For their of our well, and again, uh, it'll be up to the uh, Wolves to try and slow this Charger attack down, make them work for it a little bit more than they've had to in their first five wins of the season. Alec Marty, the quarterback, in the gun, takes the snap and hands off to the running back and across the 30 up to the 31-yard line for a pickup of about four. It'll be second down and six. Well, Basic Central's got a, a pretty good plan. They're, they're considering their uh, five guys up front and handle uh, Dow's run game, and they're playing this deep umbrella. Little movement in the line that time, and the flags fly, and this is probably going to be a five-yard walk-off against the Chargers. Looked like the right side of the line for Dow moved just a little bit early that time. And it is a five-yard walk-off back to the 20-yard line. Chargers need to get out to their 38 for the first down. Second down and 13. Chargers a little sluggish here. They look very the sluggish going. tonight. They don't have that, that same giddy up that they've had. Marty by himself in the backfield. Looks out to the left side, and now Alec Marty's going to keep it across the 30 and down to about the 33-yard line. So a pickup of a pretty good chunk there. He's going to leave Dow, though, with the third and about four or five yards. This three-deep zone is, is, is bothering Marty, but it shouldn't bother, bother Marty. He's, uh, he has the ability to hit those, those seams that are in the zone. He throws to a small window. You'll watch as this game goes on. He has the ability to throw in that window that every football coach loves to see in their quarterback. Third down and four for the Chargers. Marty over the middle, and the pass is almost picked off again, as that time Brent Tejash got his hands on it and almost pulled it in. So with the incomplete pass, the Chargers are faced with fourth down. Very uncharacteristic. Don't know what the uh, missing ingredient was right there, but there were a couple of wolves that looked like they had a shot at it that time. See, the under coverage 
is sitting there waiting for you to throw that little flare. And if you don't, if you don't have anything coming in your way, they're able to drop off. Same with their linebackers. Linebackers are getting very good depth. Max Kidd with a low line drive that's going to bounce at the 36-yard line and be down by the Chargers at that point. So good field position for the Wolves as they begin their second series of downs. And they'll spot it at the 33-yard line. AC Central has responded tonight, haven't they? They, they look, have. They look, they look very strong. Very strong. And as we were talking, this has uh, been a long time coming for the Wolves. They've had some tough years here in the last couple of years, but they started putting it together this year, and Coach Frazier is wanting to kind of build that winning tradition back that they used to have at Bay City Central. Other than their game against Arthur Hill, which they gave up only 18 points, they've given up almost 40 points a game. So... That, to me, that's pretty impressive right now. Here's Zanotti straight back, and he throws it over the middle, and it's complete. May have been tipped that time, but was finally brought in by Brent Tejash. It's going to be second down at the 39-yard line, second and four for the Wolves. And they've just about wound this first quarter out of time as we're inside a minute. I see where Caleb Richard now has stepped in at inside linebacker to give them a little more pop in that defensive lineup. Second down and four, handoff to Blett, and he's across the 40 and close to a first down. Looks like he got it to about the 44, which would be a first down for the Wolves. So they'll move the chains on the far side and wind the clock again. See, this is one of the problems that wide open spread teams have, and that is they don't play pound footballs teams. And Dow right now is playing above Basie Central's pads, which is, they just can't do that because Basie Central, they've got 250, 275, 235, 240 up front. So Dow's defense is nowhere near that size. They're all about 180, 190. There's only a few 200-pounders uh, in there. And they rely on their quickness. Well, if they're pounding you, your quickness sometimes isn't going to get it. And that's what's happening right now. Right now, Dow's helmets are above Basie Central's helmets. First and ten for the Wolves. And the handoff is to the fullback. And this is Brown coming to the near side. Made a nice cut there and gets it across the 45 to the 48-yard line. Jared Brown, good-looking sophomore running back. And with that play, the first quarter is going to come to an end here at Midland Community Stadium. And a bit of a surprise, Coach 7-7 uh, at the end of the first period. Well, last week against, uh, that was the score last week against uh, Flint Powers. A very low-scoring first quarter. Flint Powers able to control the ball. But this is a surprise. This is a good-looking tonight. Good looking BC Central team, which surprises me that they see they lost to Midland uh, 35 uh, 15, 31 15, and they lost to Lapeer 48 to nothing. And uh, Lapeer is really a good football team. So we'll see what goes on as this game happens here. I was surprised in their opening game, <laughs> they beat Swartz Creek, that's not a very good football team, 58 to 43. So that was a kind of a, a deal and last week they won 63 to 28 gave up 28 points to a, a, a very below average Flint Northwestern but tonight they look like world beaters so far for the first quarter no, I, will success go to their head I don't know safe hands the coverage of this HH Dow football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff if you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next Orientation Studio training class on the second Saturday in October, which is the 11th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Saturday, November the 8th. We'll have more on that in just a moment, but we're going to get back to action to start the second period. Second down and five for the Wolves from their own 48-yard line in the pitchback to the tailback coming to the right, turns the corner and picks up pretty good yardage that time. Ball carried by number 33, Devontae Mizluski. Devontae Mizluski that time, a 5'10", 203-pound junior, was the ball carrier and apparently stepped out of bounds on the far side, just short of midfield. 
So it's going to be third down and four coming up for the Wolves. Big third down play here. Ball control down, definitely. And again, the Wolves come out with the eye in the backfield behind quarterback Zanotti. And he hands off to his tailback once again. And this time, the Charger line is there to meet the running back for virtually no gain that time. And who's underneath the pile? Caleb Richard making the first hit. Basically, Central's going to punt the ball, which is a good move on their part, and try to drive Dow back. Punter tonight for the uh, Wolves is... Chris Jacobs, Christopher Jacobs, 6'3", 252 pounds. Coach, he got his first carry last week and scored a touchdown. How about that? So we'll see what his uh, punting talent is like as he sets up at the 38-yard line. And it's a fake. And here is Bullett running to his right. Now far downfield, and the pass is knocked away on a good defensive effort that time by Eric Huss. And the Chargers fight off the... Uh, trickery that time by the Wolves and will take over with good field position. I know a lot of people like to do that. But <laughs> yours truly is one of them, but uh, at this point, you got the ball game in hand. All you have to do is force Dow back and now Dow's going to have the ball right on the 50. It's a good replay. Good play by Huss to, to keep it out. Good alertness. So first and 10 in midfield, and we'll see what the Chargers can do this time. They were stopped last time, and the snapback is high. And here comes Richard to the near side being chased, crosses the 45, the 50, and a good run by Caleb Richard inside the 45 and down to the 40-yard line. Just kept spinning and juking and picked up some good yardage that time. 11 very yards. strong, very strong runner. Here comes the replay. Watch the first move as he gets to the corner, and, and most of the time you're tackled here. First off, you have a little miss handoff, and right here he's gonna break that tackle with a strong forearm. He's gonna get into the mix here, great spin, and I want you to see that spin, when you come out of that spin, he is spinning forward as opposed to laterally. Now here's that bunch again, and this is where the intercepted, intercepted pass happened. First and 10 for Dow at the Wolves 40 yard line as Alec looks, uh, Alec Marty looks to the near side and here's a snap back and he's gonna keep it, trying to find a little running room, but there with the tackle is Sean Noonan and he was not to be denied that time, a 5'7", 178 pound senior down lineman. See, I have no idea what the problem was there because Basic Central has not changed their defense one bit since the first play. They have sat in that three-man front, two linebackers, two outside linebackers, and and three deep. And they just haven't changed. So there shouldn't be any question. If you get in that, that quad formation, what's going on? No gain on the play. Second and ten for the Chargers. And this time, no one in the backfield with the quarterback. And here's Marty straight back to pass, looking over the middle, looking, looking, looking. No pressure. Now rolls to his right. He'll keep it across the 40 to 35. Takes a pretty good hit and spins down at about the 32-yard line. Coach couldn't well, see what see. was going on downfield, but uh, yeah. he was uh, not finding a receiver. Well, you can see they, they're dropping off. I mean, they're, they're sending three and dropping eight. And there are spots in that seam to find, but he's he's having his trouble. You know, and sometimes when you throw an intercepted pass, you kind of have a little hesitancy about the release. Third down and a long one, almost two yards for the first down. As we're in the second period of action, nine minutes and 39 seconds to go in the second period. Our score tied 7-7 between Dow High and Bay City this, Central. This is that same empty formation. Wherever Caleb Richard is, that's where the ball will be. And there it is over the middle and oh, oh had his hands on it at the 25-yard uh, line but couldn't bring it in. And it's going to be third down. I believe that uh, that's Justin Cook who almost hauled it in. Usually a very reliable receiver. Justin Cook uh, with five catches before tonight's ball game. Alec Marty is just a little bit off right now. 
I mean, that, he, Justin Cook was open between four and five yards, and then finally Alec loses the ball. Fourth down and one, and uh, what do you think the chances Caleb Richards is going to get this call? All the way. At the 31 yard line. Snap back, it's a high one, and Marty is going to keep it. He faked it to Richard, and he is going to be wrestled down and takes a big shot back at the 35 yard line. And first in on that stop for the Wolves was Corey McLaughlin, who put the big hit on Alec Marty, and the Wolves are going to take over on downs. Coach, you're speechless. I, I am speechless because Caleb Richards always gets you the first down. At the 36-yard line, the Wolves will take over. First and 10, Dominic Zanotti will hand it off to his lone setback and up near the 40-yard line, good hole over the right side. This is a big, big Wolves line. They go about 245, 250 with everybody except the sec, uh, exception of one player and uh, much larger than the Chargers. And that was one thing Coach Watkins was worried about. Pick up a three on the play. Uh, second down, we'll say in six, we'll call it. As Zanotti drops back into the gun once again, and this time the handoff is to the tailback and across the 40 up to the 43-yard line. Now, Sid, aren't you a little surprised that Basie Central now has gone into that spread formation rather than that fullback, tailback, quarterback under center, which they had a lot of success with and, had, and were really pounding the ball down the field? Well, they are mixing it surprised. up a little bit. and uh, I'm surprised. They're looking at third and one, so they are moving it just a bit here. At the ball is at the 45-yard line. And once again, they line up in the gun with Zanotti, the quarterback. Two receivers on the far side, one on the near, and the tailback gets the call and gets it across the 45 to the 46-yard line and should be enough for the first down. Brendan Mulligan, the uh, carrier that time. Mulligan's a 5'7", 166-pound junior. And it is a first down at the 47-yard line. Clock stop. It's exactly what they see Central wants. Take the ball. Take your time. Get into halftime with a lead or a tie. From the 47-yard line, Zanotti. Goes downfield, has a man open, and overshoots his intended receiver that time. Nathan Anthony, who caught the touchdown pass a little while ago. Second and 10 for the Wolves at the 47-yard line. And uh, again, as you were mentioning, why do you do that? Why? Why? I don't understand. First down passes, uh, you know, occasionally they're good. Occasionally. But in this case right here, when you're able to pound the ball for four and five yards every time you do it, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want to slow the game down. Here's Mulligan finding a big hole over the right side and gets it inside the 45 of Dow and near first down yardage at the 44 of the Chargers is where they unstack them. Let's see, of all their runners, I think Mulligan, the other, the other guys are powerful. Mulligan is dangerous. He has the ability to break it. As you can see there, a great nine-yard run right there. Mulligan averaging over eight yards a carry coming into tonight's ball game. And it's third down and one now for the Wolves at the 44 of the Chargers. And the quarterback sneaks straight ahead and Zanotti moves the pile down to the 40-yard line. That big Wolves offensive line able to move Dow back and pick up a first down. Dominic Zanotti keeps the ball. Well, this is a, uh, a great classic case of ball control. Brad Drinkpool for the Chargers. Picks up the As first the clock the continues to run down, the just about at the seven-minute mark of the first half. The Midland Marching Band Showcase will take place this coming Wednesday right here in the community the Coach, do you think it's just it's a, a case right now where the Chargers' children. smaller line can't handle those uh, uh, again, big guys? Again, Sid, if we, watch the, if we watch the play, the gold helmets are above the black helmets. 
on, on the snap of the ball. You can see it right there, and then when that happens, you're going to be arm tackling. And again, a giant hole over the right side and some good push forward by the Wolves line gets Brendan Mulligan down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line, so he picked up another six. Spencer Stevenson for the Chargers. Second down and four. Zanotti goes over to the far side every time and picks up the play. And they can do just about whatever they want on this play, second down and four. This time they have double wide receivers to the near side and one split to the far side. And it's Zanotti rolling to his left, going downfield and throws, throws his intended receiver, Nathan Anthony, who was open. But uh, Zanotti hasn't shown a proclivity to uh, throw on the run thus far this evening. No, not at all. Not at all. That's, again, a surprising play. When you're trying to consume the clock and you're trying to make plays happen. Of course, they definitely feel like they're in four down territory now as they're looking at second down and four. Coach, I don't feel it, but the uh, umbrellas are going up. It's getting, it's going to get damp here tonight. Third down and the handoff this time Mulligan and he just powers his way inside the 30 to about the 27 yard line, easily picking up another Bay City Central first down. Said to me about Mulligan, Number he finds that little crease and then he the has another ball. gear once he gets into the crease. You think the way that he runs is that he's huge, but he's only a 5'7", 166 pounds. And he's a junior and part of that uh, tradition that Coach Frazier is trying to build over there at Bay City Central. First and 10 for the Wolves. They'll scrimmage from the 27-yard line of Dow, and they have controlled this first half offensively. Shut down the uh, juggernaut of an offense for the Dow High Chargers. This time Mulligan gets the handoff, cuts left, makes a good cut, and he's headed for the end zone. 10-yard line, five, and finally wrestled down at the uh, two-yard line that time by Justin Cook. But what a run that Again, time this by is, Mulligan. This is Mulligan doing what he does. He gets the ball, makes a nice cut, it's cut back right there. Arm tackle. We're going to have another arm tackle right there. And finally, it takes a, a great play out of uh, Justin Cook to save a touchdown. Kyle Nearing hobbled off the field for the Wolves, injured slightly, but under his own power. And it's first and goal for Bay City Central just inside the Chargers three yard line. And again, Mulligan is the setback with coach, uh, quarterback Zanotti and he gets the handoff and tries to back in there and the Chargers are there waiting for him in the middle of that line. That was a, be a much better charge out of Dow, much better. Looks like Caleb Richard may have been in there on the stop that time and uh, also Matt Flanagan had a hand in it. Stop by number 34, Spencer Stevenson for the Chargers. Second down and goal for Bay City Central at the three and a half yard line. And now the fullback, Jared Brown, has come back in the ball game for Bay City Central as run of the eye formation and the handoff to Mulligan. And Mulligan just lowers his head and powers into the end zone for a touchdown. Very impressive run, very impressive drive. Very. Watch here, Coach, how he just lowers his head and will not be denied behind Both his fullback, Jerry Brown. The sad part is about that is Gerald Brown did not, did not touch a soul. And, and it was all Mulligan. He got into the scene and then just kept powering his way in. Here's Andrew Kern for the point after. Good snap and hold, and Kern's kick is up, and it is no good. Off to the right, and with four so minutes and 23 no seconds good. left until halftime, still seven. with the missed extra point, a 13-7 lead for the Bay City Central Wolves, and a, a little bit of a stunned crowd here on homecoming Marvel night by the Dow Partisans on the near side of the field. Sometimes I used to call this the homecoming lag. <laughs> where you, you know, you, you get caught up in all the things that are happening in homecoming. You're worried about the dance, you're worried about, uh, you know, your suit, your date, and you forget about playing the football game, especially when you take a look at basically central stats and you say, okay, well, they're giving up 40 points a game. Well, that's, this should be a, a run for us. 
Well, all of a sudden you're now in the football game because they figured it out. Keep the ball in front of you on defense. And this is something they didn't do last year. Dow rolled them for 58 points last year. And they had the 58 points in the middle of the third quarter. And Basie Central just did not play good pass defense. Tonight they're playing good pass defense. Kern has it teed up. Johnny Wilson is the man in the middle for the Dow High Chargers to receive this kick. As Kern gets the signal, kicking into the wind, and it's a low liner that's going to be fielded by Huss on the far side of the field at the 15, comes right back up the middle, finding some good running room across the 35 and up to the 38-yard line. It's an excellent run back by Huss. So here's kind of the situation you talked about reverse. Let's see how Dow High is going to answer the touchdown. Because right now they've got to figure out first how to stop basically central. And that, that's what their defensive coaches are should be playing on the sideline. And offensively, they've got to attack this three deep zone. Caleb Richard, the setback with quarterback Alec Marty on first and 10 at the 38. Richard goes in motion. Here's Marty looking to the near side, completes the pass to Rob, who's just going to be stopped after only about a yard gain. Mike Rob, the tall drink of water at the end made the catch, but there was nowhere to go as it's closely covered and it's second down and nine. Number six. Rob comes to the near side. Devontae Stein is split to the far side. And Caleb Richard in the slot to the near side. Here's Marty looking downfield. Now looks over on the far side, throws out there and completes the pass at the 40 and inside the 40 goes Devontae Stein. See, I think Devontae Stein is going to be a true uh, football player as we go on here. He hasn't been utilized Stein enough in my opinion. 6'5", 190 like pounder. He's, he's got it all. Good pass too by... Excellent uh, pass. Found Marty. him right in the open seam. The safety came over and saved the play. And they advance it down to about the 28-yard line where it's first down for the Chargers. Snap back to Marty and the handoff to Richard. And Richard, again, has nowhere to go as he crosses the 30, gets to the 29, may have lost half a yard that time. So second down and long for the Chargers. They doing some interesting things. One time they have one guy down on the ground and 10 guys standing up. This time they had three guys down on the ground and fired both outside linebackers to put a little pressure. This time they're going to play the 1-1-10. One, one Second down, just a little over 10. Here's the pitch back to Caleb Richard going on the far side, cuts it up and gets down near the 25-yard line. Again, a short pickup and good pursuit that time by the Wolves on defense. And it's gonna be third down as they spot it at the 26. And I think we'll see this 110 defense again. Now, last year, this is exactly what Midland did against Dow in, in, the, uh, in both games that they played. They played three guys that were up front, everybody else standing around and trying to make open field tackles. Here's Marty flaring it out to the near side to Richard, trying to find some running room. Has a couple of blockers ahead of him, but he's being hemmed in on the near side and is going to be dropped, maybe for a couple yard loss. Looked pretty good there for a minute. Had some blockers downfield, but there were two ahead of the blockers, and they hemmed Caleb Richard in. See, you got quads out there, which brings everybody over. So that means there are seams on the other side. So you get four to one side, one to the other. You could go to the other side and make one play. Or you go to this side and try to find the open seam. The flare pass, everybody's standing up. So it means everybody's going to be running to that flare. Well, as the first half goes, this is a big play for Dow High. Fourth down and 11. If they don't make it here, they're going to give the ball back to the Wolves, and the Wolves can uh, run out the clock here in the first half. So we'll see what the Chargers come up with on this big fourth down play. And they're going to take a timeout. Timeout called by Dow. Hey, friends. 
Help the friends of MCTV make some magic by attending a magic show on Sunday, October 12th at 3 p.m. in the Grace A. Dow Magic Memorial Future Library Church. Auditorium. Join Dow magicians High Cameron and Jeff City. as they Any have some fun in a family-friendly family friendly show. Tickets are $5 for persons age 5 and up. Kids 4 and under are free. You can buy tickets at MCTV in the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. One minute, 24 seconds left here in the first half, and uh, you're a little surprised, aren't you? I am a little surprised, but you know what? If, I, if, if I'm coaching this, I'm telling my team, this is exactly what you need. You need to play this kind of a football game and see what you're made out of. And at this point here, we're going to see what Dow's made out of tonight, especially on this play right here. you got a fourth and 11. You're inside uh, the 30-yard line, and you've got to make a play. You've got to make a lot of plays as this game goes on and keep the ball out of Bay City Central's hands. But again, you can see how many people are standing up for Bay City Central. So you just have to throw in that little easy seam, and it's there. The easy seam is there. Just get it to him right there. Here's Marty being chased. Now he's being hemmed in and trying to get outside. He's on the run, looking downfield, throws touchdown. it into the end zone, and it is caught. And out of bounds at about the two-yard line. I believe that may be Devontae Stein. Again, wide open, a six-foot-five receiver. It's a beautiful catch and a tremendous reaction. Here comes the stunner off the side. You can see it right there. Nobody picked him up. And this is this is the greatness of Alec Marty right here. He gets loose. He sees Devontae Stein over there, throws a ball where only Devontae Stein can catch it. Bought some time, too, from the offensive line who allowed him to get outside and uh, allow Stein to get open. First and goal now for the Chargers. And the pitch back to Caleb Richard coming to the near side. Now cuts it back across the five and into the end zone for the touchdown. So the Chargers... After that big fourth down play, now come back with the touchdown run from Caleb Richard, and they are one point away from taking the lead. This is an excellent run by Caleb Richard. He just paces himself all the way. He has a number of different gears, and you're going to see this. Uh, well, we, were, we, lost, we lost the replay. That's all right. We'll, and it was a good we'll, one, too. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll catch it at halftime. We'll catch it at halftime. Here is Max Kidd now to attempt the point after and put the Chargers in the lead. Good snap, ball is down, kick is up, and it is good. And with 107 left in the first half, the Chargers have regained the lead by a score of 14-13. See, that was a heartbreaker for Basie Central. They have third and 11, fourth and 11, and an opportunity to go into halftime with the lead. And all fired. when they stopped Dow the last time, they were all fired up. This is this is still a football game uh, to be reckoned with here. Now. Will Basie Central do something stupid at this point and throw the ball into the hands of Dow? That could very well happen. Here's the replay of the touchdown as we go along. You're going to see Caleb Richard running. running. We missed the replay again. <laughs> it was still good. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Here's Max Kidd teeing it up for the Chargers. And... Uh, don't know if those two receivers back deep for Bay City Central will see this ball or not. I would say that they're not going to. You're right in Max's wheelhouse right here. Kid with a very high kick to the near sideline comes down right at the goal line. And Ballette, I believe, is running it back across the 20, finds a seam and gets up to about the 27-yard line. So a nice run that time. It was Nathan Anthony on the run. He ran that with power coming back. I mean, he, he looked for a, a Dow defender and ran right into him. So 101 left here until halftime, and we'll see what Coach Morley Frazier wants to do, uh, run out the clock and maybe go in with a moral victory, I think you could say, Coach, if you're the Bay City Central Wolves. But the momentum definitely on Dow's side after that touchdown drive by the Chargers put them on top. Dominic Zanotti, the quarterback, 6'2", 177-pound junior, in the gun with the handoff this time to Mulligan, trying to get outside, does so, but is appended on the far side of the field at the 28-yard line after a short game. That was a very, very, very good defensive play by Dow. 
gain of two on the play. It'll be second and eight for the Wolves, and it looks like they're going to be content to let the clock run down as we're inside 35 seconds to go in the first half. Time for one more play. Less a uh, timeout is called by one of the two teams. Zanotti, handoff straight ahead. Once again, Mulligan has some running room across the 30 to about the 33, but barring a timeout call, that's going to be it in the first half as we're inside of 10 seconds to go. And that's going to end play here in the first half at Midland Community Stadium. Bit of a surprise, but the Dow Chargers are on top by a score of 14-13 in the first half. And, uh, Coach, uh, you have to be impressed with the uh, Wolves play. I'm, in the I'm first very half. impressed with BC Central tonight. I thought this is uh, probably the best game that they've played. Now, whether they can bring it for another half, I don't know. And whether or not, again, they have not hit the lightning of Dow High. They saw a little bit of it right there, but it's still 14-13, and that's, that's going to be their game. Now, is Dow going to be able to stand up to Bay City Central? That, that's a crucial element right there. They haven't been able to do it. Bay City Central has put together two very nice drives for touchdowns. And again, Dow's defense is playing above the Bay City Central pads, and Bay City Central is really pushing them around a little bit. Well, it makes for a good second half, but just as exciting down on the field. And right now, you're going to get to listen to the Dow High Charger Band. So let's go down.
Baker Marching Band welcomes their alumni band and pom pom squad to the field to perform a great new routine to a current hit by Fallout Boy. Light them up! of the show with one of Mr. Teresa's favorite arrangements for marching band, the theme from Superman, written by John Williams and arranged by Larry Clark.
Ladies and gentlemen, the H.H. Dow High School Charger Alumni Band. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2014 Dow High School Homecoming Halftime Ceremony. At this time, it is our pleasure and honor to introduce the 2014 Dow High Charger Homecoming Court. Please welcome our freshman class representatives and their parents from the class of 2018. Alexis Whiteman, escorted this evening by her parents Mark and Claire Whiteman. John Bergeron, escorted by this evening by his parents Michael and Kendra Bergeron. Taylor Hunter, escorted this evening by her parents Stephen and Jackie Hunter. Alex Jonas, escorted this evening by his parents Keith and Deanna Jonas. Congratulations to the freshman class representatives and their families. Representing the class of 2017, Jack Kivy, escorted this evening by his parents John and Michelle Kivy. Christine Labby, escorted this evening by her parents Brian and Jane Labby. Brian Mary, escorted this evening by his parents Jason and Tracy Mary. Anna Mavalganum, escorted this evening by her parents Chandra Mavalganum and Agnes Koo. Congratulations to the 2017 class representatives and their families. On the field next are our 2016 class representatives. Please welcome Amanda Klein, escorted this evening by her parents Paul and Christy Klein. Luke Drumright, escorted this evening by his parents Susan and Ray Drumright. Jenna Lee, escorted this evening by her parents Dan and Sandra Lee. Jack Yarish is the son of Ken and Jolene Yarish. He is being escorted this evening by Alex Huss and Sydney Walker. Congratulations to the junior class representatives and their families. The Dow High School homecoming king and queen will be selected from the following senior class representatives. Ashley Uffelwall, escorted this evening by her parents Sam and Tammy Uffelwall. Ashley is captain of the varsity cheer team, a student union representative, plays lacrosse, and is a member of DECA. She is a volunteer coach for the Jefferson Middle School cheerleading team. Ashley hopes to go to the University of Michigan to study law. Ben Morgan, escorted this evening by his parents Victor and Sandra Morgan. He is escorted this evening by his mother Sandra. Ben is the senior class president, a member of the National Honor Society, on the DHS golf team, and plays community center league based basketball. He hopes to study law at Hamilton College in New York next fall. Sarah Hershey, escorted this evening by her parents David and Rebecca Hershey. Sarah is a member of the National Honor Society, BPA, DHS Yoga Club, Soccer, 4-H, plays the piano, and enjoys singing. Sarah is planning on majoring in psychology at Brigham Young University after graduation. Mark Chamba is being escorted on the field this evening by Jason Jahoski. Mark is on the robotics team and a member of Club Med. He hopes to attend Michigan State University and pursue a career in the medical field.
Rachel Reardon, escorted this evening by her parents, Chuck and Debbie Reardon. Rachel is attending and playing soccer at Denison University. She is planning to major in biology and study physical therapy. She is currently a feature editor of the Dow High newspaper, The Update, member of National Honor Society, senior class treasurer, and plays varsity soccer. Brigham Ostergaard, escorted this evening by his parents, Todd and Barbara Ostergaard. Brigham is on the Dow High swim team, a member of the Sym Symphonic Marching Band, Jazz Band, Robotics Club, Programming Club, National Honor Society, Boy Scouts of America, and a member of his church youth group. After graduation, Brigham will serve two, a two-year mission for his church before going to school at Brigham Young University. He hopes to major in mechanical engineering or computer science. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our 2014 Dow High School Senior Class Homecoming representatives. Walking on the field is last year's homecoming queen, Miss Abby Drumray who is here tonight from the University of Michigan to crown the 2014 homecoming queen. Last year's homecoming king, Mr. Michael Carey, is unable to be here tonight, but sends his congratulations to the homecoming court from Butler University. Our Dow High School leadership, the student leadership advisor, Mrs. Kim Outnin, will present the medallion to Dow High School King. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dow High School Class of 2015 Homecoming King is, drum roll please. Brigham Ostergaard. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dow High School Class of 2015 Homecoming Queen is, drum roll please, Ashley Huffalong. A bouquet of yellow roses are being presented to the H.H. Dow Homecoming Queen Ashley on behalf of the Dow High student body and staff by the Dow High Principal, Mrs. Pamela Castle. Mr. Davis, Assistant Principal of Dow High School, is presenting the Charger Bolt to our Homecoming King. Ladies and gentlemen, H.H. Dow High School is proud to present to you the 2014 Dow High School Homecoming Court. Please stand for the Charger fight song played by the 215 member Charger Marching Band.
in third place, the German Club with Wolverine. In second place, the seniors representing Batman. And in first place, highlighting the Human Torch, the National Art Honor Society. Thanks to all the students who took the time to create the banners. We appreciate your hard work. Well, a great halftime performance by the Dow High Marching Band, and congratulations to all the participants in the homecoming king and queen ceremony. Great night for Dow High School, and at halftime, they're leading the Bay City Central Wolves by a score of 14 to 13. Coach, let's get back to football, and uh, well, first interesting off, first half. Before we get back to football, you got to congratulate a, a band that has 215 members in a in an era that really most of the bands we've seen have been 40, 50, and 60, and so that that music tradition continues on here in Midland at both schools. So I, I'm really proud of. I love watching, I haven't watched too many half times, so I love watching the band perform right now, and they're just outstanding. Now, back to football. We're going to take a look at some highlights from the first half, and, uh, and, and there, were, there were a considerable number. There were uh, plays that we thought were pretty good. Here's the first one. Dow's going to run the ball right up here, and it's a great run by Caleb Richard. He makes two great runs for two touchdowns, and he, he is the go-to guy. There's no question about it. And here you go, this is a great pass here. Alec Marty throws, oh, that's this is the interception right here where Basie Central steps in front. Again, uh, you know, there are seams and they're, they're not able to get into those seams. Uh, Alec is about a day late and a dollar short on a lot of them. This is Basie Central coming up and throwing their little slant pass in. The uh, inside safety disappears and as a result, they get the touchdown. And there we go. Now here we're in the second quarter. This is a, a run here uh, by Caleb Richard. He pushes away one. He'll get into this. We'll see the little spin move, which gave him another almost five yard. Terrific play. And this is basically Central coming up here on this play with a real power run. And this is a great run by Mulligan. As you can see, he, he, he does know where the end zone is. He just, he had his feet trapped up underneath them and uh, got down inside the area. And this is the touchdown run right here by Mulligan. And you just see this run. The thing that you see in every one of these Bay City runs, again, I, I reemphasize this, and that is Dow is playing uh, uh, up. And they just can't do that on defense. Great pass to Devontae Stein here in the corner. Nice touch. Um, Stein gets down inside the 30. And this here play is a, another great pass here to Stein. Watch Marty. He's going to get out of the, the clutches. Makes a beautiful run. He's, he's an excellent athlete. Point guard in basketball. Makes a great, perfect throw. And, of course, Stein goes up, uses all 6'5 of them, and catches the ball. And this is Alec. This, again, is uh, Caleb Richard pacing himself, wait, letting the breaks happen. And once it happens, he's, he sprints into the end zone. That's our, that's our first half highlights. And we're just gonna, before we get started, let's take one look at the keys of the game and see how they're going. And if we could do that, uh, we'd be able to see how they're going. Bay City Central, run the ball. They're running the ball. They're avoiding a shootout. And for the most part, they found number 22, Caleb Richard. But he is such an exceptional athlete. Dow, stay on the attack, has not done that. They've been able to get 14 points. Uh, they've been not able to control Bay City Central's run game. And their field position has been average, not not normally where where they have. Usually they get the ball somewhere around the 50-yard line. So it'll be interesting watching how that progresses as the game rolls on. But here's the thing I'm going to point out here. Basie Central is running a 1-10 defense in essence. Sometimes they're bringing the tackles. Sometimes they're just letting them flare out a little bit. Sometimes they're bringing a stun off the corner to put a little pressure. But it doesn't matter. In the, in the secondary, it's all zone. So what needs to happen is Dow needs to do something like a stick route where you go down and you stop. Sit down in the zone. Every one of Dow's passes 
the, the receiver is running right into the zone, sometimes running into the wide open space and then into the coverage. So to me, those stick routes are very important, and Dow's got to make a couple of what I call splash, splash plays, and that is they got to get a 50, 60-yard pass, run, something that excites. Right now, the, the crowd is out of the game. They're more in the halftime than they were the game. Mm-hmm. And they've got to get they got to get the crowd back into the game again. Get them excited. Their sideline has to get excited. Um, I don't want to think they're waiting for the dance to start, but you know, <laughs> you got to get going. There. I always was. <laughs> yeah, I know, Sid. I know. I understand. I understand. Well, but we're going to get this second half started with uh, Max Kidd is going to tee it up for the. Chargers. He's going to kick the wind with him, so the Chargers will have the wind at their backs. And it's a pretty significant little breeze coming from your left to your right. I, I was surprised that Max didn't kick it out of the end zone. This same wind was at Bay City Western a couple weeks ago, and they never had a chance to return one. Kid kicks about half of them out of the end zone, so we'll see what he does here with Billet and Anthony waiting deep for Bay City Central, and he hits a line drive that there, is going to sail. That's the kick. Sail through the end zone, so Bay City's going to have a long hoe to go here. 80 yards, they'll start at their own 21st and 10, and uh, we'll see what they come up with. You know, I, I was thinking about this. Against Bay City, Bay City Western a couple weeks ago, Max was not playing defense. Now he's playing defense, mm-hmm. and sometimes, you know, that takes a little bit out of your legs. Dominic Zanotti, who had a pretty good first half, will be in there to run the controls for the Wolves here, and Josh Blett is his lone setback as the Wolves will put it in play first and 10 from their own 20, and the handoff goes to Blett. Finds a big hole up the middle, breaks it across the 30 and up to the 32, and uh, Coach, I think even you and I could have made it through that hole. That was a beautiful hole. So a first down on the first play from scrimmage for the Wolves as they move the chains on the far sideline up to about the 32-yard line. good 12-yard run. Good start for Bay City Central here in the second half. Ballette and Mulligan are impressive runners tonight. They are, and, uh, well, don't forget Jared Brown, the fullback, who we've seen uh, busting up close to the line a couple of times from his fullback position, the sophomore. First and 10 at the 32-yard line, Zanotti. Takes the snap, and once again, the handoff is to Ballette, and this time he's dragged down from behind by Devin Anzaret, leading the way for the uh, Chargers. It's going to be second down and 11, so a loss of one on that play. Now, second and long, what goes here? Well, it usually goes some sort of a draw, some sort of a screen. Uh, You try to get half of what you need. So we'll see, they're gonna be in a pretty wide spread formation. Looks like they're gonna throw the ball. There's Out here to screen. Anthony. Anthony trying to break free, gets past one man, and then the uh, the help comes, and it's uh, Matt Flanagan in there leading the way for the Chargers that time. Also Kidd in on the stop, and it's gonna be third and long for the Wolves. Now you've got a situation where Dow can flare back and rush the quarterback, put, try to get a sack if possible and try to get the ball thrown over the head of the receiver and get an interception here. So a big call here early in the third quarter to see who is going to gain the initial control and momentum here in this close ball game. And Zanotti, the quarterback, back in the gun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and Zanotti keeps it, gets across the 35, but then he is met by a host of Dow Chargers. Just looked like they knew what was coming that time. And they stop him at the 36-yard line, and the Wolves are going to have to punt it away. Again, Caleb Richard at the bottom of the pile. Richard in there along with Flanagan once again, the 5'11", 175-pound senior. And it's big Chris Jacobs who will kick it away, left footer. So on fourth and sixth, the snap back to... Jacobs gets a high kick that's going to bound down at about the 40, take a good Dow roll up across the 45 into about the 47-yard line. So excellent field position. Now this is the, the field Chargers. position Dow is used to having. They uh, they force you into that situation. I said that little quarterback keeper on third down was, uh, was a tough play to run against Dow at that point. They knew the screen was coming, so they were able to handle that play. 
So, you know, instead of pounding the ball out, Bay City Central ends up falling right into what Dow wants them to do. So we'll see if the uh, Wolves can hold off the Chargers or if the Chargers are uh, going to gain the early momentum here in the second half. And quarterback Marty keeps it this down. Oh, it's snapped back to Richard. And Caleb Richard fighting off tacklers. Gets across the 40, the 35-yard line. And a nice run that time by Caleb Richard as he took the snap and picked up big yardage. Carried by number 22, Caleb Richard for the Chargers. Push out of bounds by number two. By number so a first two, down for Dow. For there's a question on the sideline whether or not he got pushed while he was out of bounds. And there's that there's a fine line. The official's going to make that decision as to whether it was a momentum hit or whether it was a dirty hit. First and 10 for the Chargers at the 33-yard line. Quarterback draw this time and picking up good yardage, finding a hole down to the 25-yard line goes Alec Marty. Marty, a pretty good runner coming into the uh, ball game tonight. 32 carries for 88 yards and five touchdowns rushing. And he picks up good yardage here, eight yards, second down and two at the 25. This time Marty will go under center. And the pitch back to Richard trying to get outside, and he is going to be wrapped up. See, I just don't like that play against this defense. That's, lateral plays do not work against a team that has 10 guys standing up. You've got to be able to run right at it. Alec Marty gets nine yards on a play that he ran right at that defense. You've got to run at the defense, not around it. They've just got too many guys standing up. You've got to run at them. That was a good defensive play by Kyle Nearing, and it's third down and eight now for the Chargers as they back it up to the 32-yard line. And the snapback. And Marty trying to find room ahead, and he dropped at the 35 yard line, and that's going to be a couple of yard loss, and Dow is going to be facing fourth down. Fourth and about 11 for the Chargers, and we'll see what Coach Jason Watkins and staff want to do here. It looks like they're going to go for it, though. Two wide outs on both sides of the field. Caleb Richard in the slot to the right. Snap back to Marty, looking downfield, trying to find a receiver. There he is, open at the 10 yard line and trying to slip on in there and picking up, looked like, uh, well, I thought it once it was, uh, no, it wasn't Justin Cook maybe down there. Yeah, it was Justin, Justin Cook, Cook who made the stop or made the catch. Again, a great pass by Marty. Stands in the pocket. There's a lot of heat coming around him. Steps right up, makes a perfect throw right into the shoot. The guy who is not in the game right now, not he's on the field but not in the game is Mike Robb. They have not thrown to him, and they have a lot of opportunities. He, it, it, to me, he's, he's a he's a playmaker. He's six foot six. He can out jump anybody who's covering him. And, uh, and to me, he, they got to get the ball to him. Yeah, three touchdown receptions last week. Yeah, they've got to get the ball in his hands. They're not double covering him. They are covering him inside, outside zone. And so it'll be first down from the 10 yard line as Dow tries to cash in here and build that 14 to 13 lead that they currently have over Bay City Central. Again, Richard, the lone setback, man in motion to the near side. And it's gonna be Marty keeping it inside the 10, the five and being stacked up at that point. So a pretty good gain down to about the four yard line. It's gonna be second and short for the Chargers. See how nice it is when you get the ball in good field position. Just a few first downs and, a, and you know, really a great pass catch by uh, Cook. Got him right down in this zone right here. But this is where Mike Robb comes into play. And, and Stein on the other side. I mean, they, they outmatch the guys that are covering them. Second down from the five, and here's Richard trying to spin it out to the right side, and he is going to be hemmed in, and it's Mulligan who hung on for dear life and drops him for about a six-yard loss. Okay, that's twice we've done that play where the quarterback has come, anything, well, they've come under center, and we've run a pitch. Well, again, lateral movement against a, a stand-up defense. It doesn't work. It is rather uncanny the way they're making all their yeah. yardage up the middle and you got to run at it if you're going to run. 
Second down, Richard, and it's the reverse, and coming to the near side and running out of room and now throwing it is Justin Cook. It's a, and there's that Mike Robb down there trying to outleap everybody, and it goes off his fingertips. Out of bounds and incomplete. That's intended for number 85, Mike Robb, incomplete. So it's going to be fourth down now, and uh, let's watch this one again. Coach. little razzle-dazzle. And he's under pressure, to actually, to get, and he throws a wobbly duck up in the air, and they're shooting at it, and he goes up in the air, and it, see, it wobbled just enough for the, the guy to hit the ball on the way coming down. Here comes a 39-yard field goal attempt by Max Kidd, ball spotted at the 19, a 29-yard field goal, excuse me, and good snap. Kidd's kick is high enough, deep enough, and it is good. And with that 29-yard field goal, the Chargers have taken a 17-13 lead. But, Coach, I don't know if they're coming away from that one satisfied or not. Absolutely not. That, that was a touchdown. Uh, you know, we had two plays in there, the two tosses that were negative yardage, and uh, a couple of, of Marty's runs that were not where they should have been. And, again, at the end of the thing, you have a double reverse pass to Rob, whereas I think Rob just can catch anything. You allow the you allow the coverage to get to him, but 17-13, 17-13, and this is again one of those uh, key portions of the game that you talked about at the very beginning of the game to see how Bay City Central is going to answer back. Even though it was only a field goal, Dow has scored the last 10 points now, and it'll be important for the uh, Wolves if they're going to get back into it to mount something right here. And they've got Anthony and Billet back deep to receive the kick from Kidd. Kidd's kick is a high end over end kick coming to the six yard line. And back up the field across the 15, the 20 and the 23 yard line is where they'll put it in play on the return that time from Anthony. Brought down by number 56. Spencer Holbert for the Chargers. The Wolves have had pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, experience moving the ball tonight. They've been able to move against the Charger defense, but they've started these first two drives in the second half deep in their own territory. And they've got it right now at their own 24 yard line, first and 10. Here's Zanotti with the flare out, and Anthony had it in his hands and then dropped it on good defensive play that time. Coming up to make the hit was number six for the Dow High Chargers. See, that's Dow's game. Jared Muhammad. They're going to let you throw the ball. They're going to think, okay, you're either going to throw it, we're going to hit you, knock it out of your hands, you're going to catch it, we're going to tackle you. They're just not going to let you get, they're not going to let you beat them deep. They're going to keep everything inside and in front. Second down and 10 at the 24-yard line. This time the handoff is to the running back, Blett, who gets across the 25 up to about the 26-yard line. Short gain that time. And Much better defensive play out of Dow. Left side of the Dow mm -hmm. line there to make the stop. Ball carried by number seven, Joshua Blett for the Wolves. So third down now, and here is a big play for the Wolves as they're looking at third and eight. And a stop here by Dow gives them the opportunity to uh, really start thinking about putting this game away. Zanotti with an eye in the backfield. End split on both sides of the field. Zanotti straight back over the top, and it's incomplete. And it was a good defensive play there on the far side of the field by Eric Huss, who knocked that ball away when it looked like the receiver had it in his hands. Now, I, I always have a philosophy about the game is going to be decided by what you do at the beginning of the third quarter. What, what adjustments were made and what are you going to do? So far, Dow has stopped Basie Central twice, and Basie Central, it's going to hit. Jacobs with another fairly short kick, but it takes a good Bay City Central roll. It's going to be down at the 37-yard line, so not bad field position for Dow to begin another set of downs, and this is a crucial one on defense for the Wolves, and if Dow can uh, march down there and put another score on the board, it 
will say a lot about how this game is going to go the rest of the way. First and 10 for the Chargers on their own 37 yard line. Chargers with the lone score here in the second half, a field goal by Max Kidd of 29 yards, built the lead to 17-13 with 5.18 to go in the third quarter. This time Rob splits to the left, Stein to the far side. And in motion is Caleb Richard. Here's Marty to Rob at the 35, and he is going to be hemmed in there by Demarcus Carter. See, see again, that's a lateral play to 10 men standing. So everybody reacts to it. That play works great if you got five to seven guys rushing, at least five guys rushing. But when you have all those people standing up, that jailbreak screen is just made for that defense. Demarcus Carter, the man who made the stop that time, had two fumble recoveries last week, so a big night a week ago and a big stop there. Here's Marty back to pass. Now he's going to take off, trying to find some running room outside, gets across the 35 to 40 and is run out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. And now we've got a late flag that's coming in on the near side of the field as a little uh, extracurricular activity taking place at about midfield, and we'll see what the call is. Looks like the Dow player was trying to throw a block, and the, uh, the uh, Wolves player wasn't accepting too well, but we'll see it's unsportsmanlike conduct against Bay City Central, that's and that is a 15, big penalty. 15 yards and a first automatic first down. That's a tremendous penalty. That goes uh, from third and seven to first and ten, and uh, that's, that's the kind that uh, makes coaches retire early. Well, it makes coaches say to that player, you're going to run <laughs> until you don't know when the next year is going to start. I mean, see, those are the kind of plays that just, the, they're plays of frustration, and you just uh, you just can't have it. That's a, that, that made it for Dow. Dow. Dow can take this right in and score just based on that because of the field position. First and 10 on the 44-yard line. Trip receivers to the near side of the field. Richards in the slot. Empty backfield. Snap back to Marty looking downfield. Good protection this time. Goes out in the flat. Stein has it across the 30 and down to the 26-yard line. See, that's a little stick route. I go down, I stop. I catch the football, I run. That's a stick route. So another first down for the Chargers as they move the chains again. And it's spotted at the 23-yard line. First down and 10 for the Chargers on the Wolves, 26-yard line. Chargers trying to drive in with a four-point lead and build it up. Caleb Richard now the setback with Marty. Alec takes a snap, moving to his right. He's going to pitch back to Richard, and Richard evades one tackle and is finally rolled up there. On a good defensive play, open field tackle by Mason Hayes. Again, a lateral move, you know, a lateral play against a stand-up defense does not work. Loss of three on the play, second and 13. Stick routes and running right at them. That's what works against this defense. Clock moving three minutes, 45 seconds left here in the third period. Go down. Stein split far to the left. Rob to the near side. And now Richard goes in motion. Marty straight back to pass. Looking out in the flat. Now trying to get away. Has some good protection. May run it. He's going to be pursued. Gets across the 25 and down near the 20-yard line. So uh, excellent run that time by Alec Marty. Coach looked like he was hemmed in pretty well, but he evaded the tackle. He just uh, couldn't get to the receivers in, in the throwing position. Stein was open. Stein's been open all day on that left sideline, and uh, he just couldn't get to him. Second down and about four for the Chargers as they'll spot it at the 20-yard line, maybe just inside the 20. Bring up third down and three for your Chargers. Now all 11 players, oh no, the one went down. They had all 11 standing up. Here's Marty looking out to the right side, throws in the pass uh, over the, after being tipped, went over the fingers of the intended receiver that time for the Chargers, Mason Hayes. Now I'll tell you something that's happening tonight, and, and you're gonna see this. 
every one of these snaps have been high. Watch how high this snap is. And as a result, it kind of it it disrupts the rhythm of the play. And it's a great a great try right there by Mason to make that play. But the snaps are being high tonight. Now here's a fourth down play for the Chargers. Fourth down and they need four and they're gonna go for it at the 19 yard line. Richard in motion to the near side. Marty with the bullet and completes the pass inside the 15 and down to the 14 yard line. Just enough for a first Just down. Just enough for the first down. Yep. That was a gutsy call that time by Jason Watkins and his staff. They're looking it over, but I'm pretty sure he got the first down here. No. Wow. And they're saying he was short of the first down yardage, and it is going to go over on downs to the Bay City Central Wolves. Well. How about that? How about that spot? He had the first down, and he went backwards. And they didn't, and get, that, and they didn't get Well, he was still moving. He, he hadn't been touched. So that stops a, a pretty promising Dow scoring drive and gives the Wolves some new life now at their own 16-yard line. Zanotti, back in the game at quarterback, Takes the snap, and he'll keep it this time around the right side. Tries to find a block on the far side. Just kind of moves behind that huge uh, line of his and picks up a couple of yards. It looked like a, a misplay. It was uh, the ball was snapped low. This is the problem with the shotgun. You know, you have to have good snapper. You lose your center, you lose the game. It's pretty much a bet. So you have to be able to have good snaps and keep it moving. Or did you ever think that you would see uh, offenses come to this? Uh... Sad state of affairs, Sid. <laughs> i got to tell you, it's a sad state of affairs. I didn't know we were playing seven-on-seven seven or Air Force basketball on the football field. Here's Zanotti. This time he'll pull it down and run it again and picks up another four or five yards. And this is the surprise to me is that Bay City Central was very successful moving the football, running right at Dow. Now they're in this spread formation and they're running. They're running, but it's it's a little slower. You know what I mean? The ball has to be snapped back. Quarterback has to catch the ball. Quarterback has to hand it off. So there's a lot more movements as opposed to under center. Third down and four for the Wolves. And this time, flags fly as they get the playoff. Mulligan was going to get the call, and we'll see what the call is on the far side, but probably movement, and movement on the uh, Wolves part. Legal procedure. You know, it was uh, way back, uh, oh, I don't know, 20, 25 years ago that how That's not way back, Sid. That's just, <laughs> that's just around the corner. That's true. How Mummy was the coach at the University of Kentucky and introduced this uh, spread offense and taught it to a young disciple of his by the name of Mike Leach, who went on to the University of Oklahoma and installed the spread offense. He had a quarterback by the name of Josh Heupel. Mm -hmm. They led the league and uh, led, the, led the nation in offense, and soon uh, Leach was on his way as head coach at my old alma mater, Texas Tech University, and then the spread offense started spreading like wildfire. And now it's down to the high school ranks. Well, we were introduced to that when uh, Michigan State played Texas Tech yeah. in uh, one of the bowl games. Third down, Zanotti throws it this time complete to Blett, and he finds a little running room to the 24. Yeah, I remember when they played that game, uh, the quarterback for Michigan State went and took a snap under center, and the Texas Tech defense didn't know what he was doing. I know, I know. <laughs> So with that play, it brings up fourth down and three for the Wolves, and they'll have to kick it away with Chris Jacobs, who has uh, kicked it high but not very deep, so chances are the Chargers are going to get some good field position here as he's also kicking against a pretty stiff breeze. Snap back to Jacobs, gets it away, and again, a very high one and a very short one. Dropping down at the 45-yard line, and that's where they're down at just about the 45 or 46. So excellent field position. 
Dow's only got half the field to go. And we'll see what the Chargers can do with just under a minute left to play here in the third quarter. Well, Coach, it just seems like Dow is on the verge of, of putting this one away here in the second half, but they just haven't Can't finish. quite gelled They don't finish. And I'm, I'm telling you, Sid, I really believe that if, if most of these big plays, the snap has been high, and it's just thrown the whole timing of the play off. So we're going to see this again in, in this drive right here. Great field position, 44-yard line. Just terrific field. See how high that snap is? Here's Marty keeping it around the left side. Has one man out there blocking Stein for him and uh, rides terrific. behind that block at about the 36-yard line. That was quite a block, wasn't it? Quite a block. Big six-foot-five blocker out there. Got him at least another six or eight yards. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be second down at about three as they spot it at the 37 of Central. Yeah, you like to see uh, those ends do something besides just catch the ball, don't you? Or look pretty. You know, they <laughs> stand out there and run plays. Here's Caleb Richard taking the handoff inside the 35. Oh, this is Justin Cook with it, it looks like. And he's at about the 31-yard line. Another first down. So used to seeing Caleb Richard get the ball, but it was Justin Cook that time. And Dow will move the chains. And we'll probably have time for one more play here in the third period as when they wind it up, we'll be ticking down from 37 seconds. I'll let Marty alone. And the gun takes the snap. Looking downfield, goes out in the flat. There's Stein at the 25 inside the 20 to the, about the 18-yard line and goes out of bounds. Now see how nice and smooth that was? That was a, a nice snap. Perfect catch by the quarterback, and then an easy, smooth throw to an open receiver. And so that, that's the rhythm of the uh, spread offense. And it's like you said, Stein is like open He's all open night all, long. all the time. So a first down for the Chargers as they spot it at the 20-yard line, first and 10. And the clock moving now inside 20 seconds. So if they get this one off, this will be the last play of the third quarter. Here's Marty being chased, and he's going to be dropped on a great defensive play by Christopher Jacobs, the punter and captain of this team. Chase down Alec Marty, all 252 pounds of Christopher Jacobs. Dow's offensive line did not handle Jacobs at all. So a loss is all the way back to the 25-yard line, a loss of five that time. And with that play, the third quarter has come to an end here at Midland Community Stadium. And our score after three periods, the Dow High Chargers 17, Bay City Central Wolves 13. And Coach Frank Altimore, you got 12 more minutes of football left. And uh, Dow has been on the verge here in the second half, but like you said, just can't seem to quite put it they away. They can't put, they can't keep it. See, lightning hasn't struck. It's, it, there's been a little thunder, but we haven't seen the lightning yet that we're accustomed to seeing out of the Dow offense. I think you're right, though. I think, uh, in a way, this is a good experience for the Chargers. It is. It really is. I mean, it's the kind of game that you, you say as a coach to your team, you need this kind of game. You need to play like this. And that's that's a crucial issue for, for Dow right now. They need to, They haven't had this kind of a game. Many of their players have not played four quarters, other than maybe last week against uh, uh, Powers. And even that paper said it was a route. I listened to the game on the radio on the way home. I didn't think it was much of a route. Dow got four touchdowns in a very short period of time in the second quarter to really put it to 40 to 12. But up until that point, it was a very close game. Well, and now the Chargers are backed up just a little bit. As we begin the fourth quarter, they'll be looking at second and 15 at the 25-yard line. So we'll see if uh, they can not be their own worst enemy this time on this initial drive into the fourth quarter. And we're set for play. Second down and 15 for the Chargers. Richard goes in motion to the far side. Pitch back to Marty. 
Marty looking downfield, goes out in the flat and hits his big man Rob inside the 20, and he gets down to about the 16-yard line. Nice pass play. That was your stick play, that's, wasn't that's it? What I'm, that's what's open. That's Brown. wide open all Brown night. Just go down, sit down in the zone. Don't try to force it. Get, get in this case, half your distance. So a big third down play coming up now I'm for the little, Chargers. I'm a little concerned that if Dow doesn't convert this, they're going to have to try a field goal, and that's into that wind. And even though it's it's very capable for Max Kidd to kick it, uh, that wind can do some funny things. Third down and six for the Chargers. Here's Marty back to pass, goes across the middle, and the ball is knocked down on a good defensive play by Nathan Anthony that time. Pass for number 85, Mike so we'll see what uh, Coach Jason Watkins wants to do on fourth down and six. Uh, this would be a pretty good field see, goal, about 35 yards. Again, that pass right there is complete if Rob sits down. He ran right into the safety, into the path of the safety catching the football. This is a critical, critical play for both teams. Just short of the 16-yard line, fourth and six for the Chargers. Snap back to Marty. Looks out in the flat, throws across the middle, and completes it for a first down. Caleb Rich, no. Nope. Mason Hayes. Mason Hayes, who uh, steps catch. in there to make a catch and pick up a first down for the Chargers at about the six-yard line. Well, a big third down play. Big play. Those are backbreakers against your defense. So now the Chargers with a four point lead just six yards away from putting it into two scores. And the handoff goes to Justin Cook, finds a big hole and is digging for the end zone. And he let's see, he is gonna be stopped just short. Boy, it looked like he it had a good head like of steam. He was in and got pushed back, and the official gave him. It may be Bay State Central officials. So second down and very short inside the one-yard line. And this time, the quarterback, Alec Marty, keeps it, and let's see what the signal is. It is a touchdown. Big play. So The big play is the fourth down catch by Mason Hayes to keep that drive alive to give him a chance. Two plays later, the one-yard run by quarterback Alec Marty, and the Chargers are on top by a score of 23 to 13 with the point after to come. Good drive that time by the Chargers. A couple of big plays to keep it alive. And now they'll try and make it a bigger two-score game as kids point after is good and with 10 minutes and 18 seconds left in the game the Dow High Chargers have taken a 24 to 13 lead and coach um, that's a nice that's a, that's a two score two score game and that's what's important right there well uh, things are looking better now for uh, coach Jason Watkins to uh, for the first time ever win his first six games of the year without a loss. Well, it, that would be good for the whole the whole program needs that. They need to get through this one, and next week they got to get through Davison, and uh, of course then that's they're into the uh, the end of the season there. Say fans, you're watching this Bay City Central Dow High homecoming football game on MCTV messages on Charter Communications cable channel 189 in Midland. You can also find MPS TV under channel 99 on AT&T's UVerse. This game will be cable cast on the following dates and times. That would be Friday, October 3rd at 11.30 p.m., Saturday, October 4th, and Sunday, October 5th at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. More dates and times to follow next week on MPS TV 190. Check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org. Coverage of this program made possible in part with a donation from M Cafe and Fox Cross Croft Friends of MCTV. And Kid gets the kick away. Oh, wow. it is into deep the wind. Into the wind. Into the, the end zone. Line. 
And that was a, a tremendous kick into the wind. Tremendous. That's a pretty good breeze. We've been talking about it, probably about 10, 15 miles an hour, but it's a cold one too. And it is a do or die time, I would say, at this point for the Wolves offense, wouldn't you say, Coach? This is it right here. This drive right here. They've got to get this drive into the end zone, stop Dow, and get another drive to finish the game. So Dominic Zanotti, who's had a pretty good game at quarterback, uh, especially a good first half. But the Dow High defense, let's give them some credit here in the second half. They have shut the Wolves down. And Zanotti takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and keeps it himself. And this time, the Chargers are waiting for him at the 20-yard line for a short gain. Number 19, Dominic Zanotti for the... Number 56 for the Chargers, Spencer Hurlbut made the uh, initial hit that time. It does second down at 10. It is amazing that BC Central has gone into the spread formation when they had so much success in that eye power early in the game. And really, they were beating Dow up. In the spread formation, you're just playing right into Dow's defensive hands. This time you have two wide receivers on the far side, one on the near side, and the snap back to Zanotti, who hands off this time to Vallette his tailback, and he finds some good running room, almost first down yardage at about the 30. We'll see where they spot it. Could be a first down. Good hard run that time. That's uh, more reminiscent of what we saw in the first half. Oh, I really like Vallette. I think he's a real player. He did pick up the 10 yards. and Mulligan are, are excellent, excellent runners. Well, good hard run. of them all night hard long. and powerful. Yeah. That's tough on a defense. Yes, so. it is. You beat up the defense. First and 10 at the 30, and this time it's Mulligan getting the call, and he gets across the 30 to about the 33. And I want to remind you, Sid, that Dow's starters have not played the whole whole game. I mean, in, in, under a pressure situation where a team is coming after them and beating them up a little bit. They could be getting pretty tired in there. Well, the one good thing, it is a nice, cool night, so uh, that might help a little bit. Second down and seven. Here's Zanotti going out in the flat, competes it to Anthony, who breaks a tackle, gets across the 40 and across midfield into Charger territory. Nice pass and run that time from Zanotti to We're going to take Nathan a look Anthony. at that and watch. You'll see uh, Muhammad has a shot at it. Wolves pass to complete to number nice short out pattern right there. And see where his head was? Head came to the inside instead of across the body. And we have a good play by Max Kidd to, to save the touchdown. Just inside Charger territory, Zanotti. This time with the handoff to Mulligan going outside, finds some running room and is cut down at the 40, but there's a flag on the far side of the field. I think we're going to see holding by a wide receiver. Ball was carried by number 32, Brendan Mulligan for the Wolves. Tripped up by number Check seven. Check out the Nick. flag of the referees. It Illegal is a procedure. legal procedure. <laughs> Ball start called against the Wolves. So they'll back them up five yards into their own territory. And, to make and it take first away and a good run. Yeah, excellent run. But they are starting to find their groove just a little bit again with that running game. This is more like the uh, Wolves we saw in the first half. This time, Brett Chesley and another wide receiver here on the near side. And the handoff is to Mulligan, who finds a hole up the middle, goes across midfield into Dow territory at the 47. A good hard run that Ball time by, by Mulligan. Mulligan for the Wolves. Brought down by number seven. Well, they do have a, a nice stable of running backs. Yes, they do. And their offensive line does come off the ball. Second down, we'll call it eight for the Wolves. Time is definitely not on their side with 7.55 to go in the game. Here's Mulligan again, gets a good head of steam. Now cuts it outside at the 40 and down near the 35-yard line. Nice run that time by Mulligan. And Kidd finally made the stop for the Chargers. Now you're going to see the linebackers get caught in the wash here. And here comes the play right there. There's the linebackers are caught inside. He makes the spin. And right here, Max Kidd is able to run him down 
and make a play. At the 36 yard line, Zanotti gives the handoff to Bellet this time. Gets stopped at the line of scrimmage, keeps his legs churning and is able to turn it into about a three or four yard gain. And now we've got a late flag. And let's see what this was uh, happening in the secondary. Last one was an unsportsmanlike conduct against Bay City Central. And this is going to be holding, holding against, Dow. against Dow. So that's going to, didn't see where that was occurring, but big walk off against the Chargers that's, will take it down. It, that's a personal foul. Personal foul. Has to be. It, it, it looked like he gave a holding signal, but. Yeah, let's see if we can see it. I only didn't see it this time, but that must have been a personal foul. Personal so. foul. First down, 15 yards. First down yards. at the 17 yard line, 7.35 to go. A quick score here, and uh, this game is back in doubt. Zanotti. Oh, just past the outstretched hands of Nathan Anthony. That time he was wide open. And just a little bit mistiming there on the pass from Zanotti. Look like they lo it looks like they lost him. He's going to go right inside. Plenty of time. Yeah, the coverage is lost. See where it is? There's a mis miscommunication in there. Here's the handoff to Mulligan trying to kick it outside, and he's dropped at the 20-yard line. Ball carried by number 32, Brennan Mulligan. Okay, in my mind, this is the play of the game right here. It's going to be third and, third down and 13. 13. On the Charger 20 yard line. Good stop that time by Matt Flanagan for the Chargers, and here is that third down play. Matt Flanagan's been a pretty good player all year for Dow. He has excellent speed and, uh, and, and is a sure tackler. 5'11", 175 pound senior. He's had a good game tonight. We've called his name several times. And now we're going to have a timeout called by the timeout Wolves with the six Wolves. minutes and 50 seconds left. And Dow on top of Bay City Central by a score of 24 to 13. Still no reason at all to panic by the Chargers. They just make a good stop here, coach. And it would not surprise me to see Bay City Central go right back to the pass that Anthony dropped. That's been a traditional move of Coach Morley Frazier. Say fans, the coverage of this H.H. Dow football game is being produced by MCTV volunteers and staff. If you'd like to work on shows like this one, come to the next orientation studio training class on the second Saturday in October, which is the 11th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Saturday, November the 8th. The cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 or come down to MCTV studio in the lower level of the Grace A. Dow Memorial Library. You can learn a lot more about MCTV at www.cityofmidlandmi.gov slash MCTV. And you can follow MCTV on Facebook. Third, it is third and 13 for the Wolves. Zanotti rolling to his left, looking downfield, being chased deep into the end zone and out of the end zone. Incomplete. So fourth down now. Well covered that time by the Chargers. As number 17 for Dow High, Eric Huss had a bead on the receiver and with 643. Left in the ball game, uh, just about down to do or die on the charge of 20 yard line. for Bay City Central. Ball is at the 20 yard line and it's fourth down. And this time they bring in the big fullback, Jared Brown, as they set up in the eye. And throw the pitch back, back it's a throwback. No, it's uh, Blett throwing deep downfield, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Justin Cook. And that turnover will give Chargers. it to the Chargers with six minutes and 36 seconds left in the game and an 11-point lead for Dow High. See, see the, the, the play was the play before, the third down. This is a little trickery. They, they try a little flare. It gets under a little bit of pressure, and there's 
only one receiver down there. So you got to play. The third down play was the play. You had to make it happen there. Otherwise, on fourth down, you got just too many, too many people back there. So let's see if we don't see a lot of Caleb Richard here in the next uh, couple of plays for Dow with six minutes and 36 seconds left in the game. Chargers up by 11 from their own 20. Here is Caleb Richard straight up the middle and finds a good seam and about seven yards straight okay, ahead. Second down and three. You know, he has a deceptive little gate, but it's a, it's a deceptive, powerful, quick gate. Caleb Richard uh, just having an outstanding year. 58 carries for almost 500 yards coming into this ball game. Had 11 total TDs and eight touchdowns rushing. Now Stein comes split out to the near side. And to the far side goes Mason Hayes. In motion comes Justin Cook to the near side. Here's the handoff to Richard following that line and he is able to wedge out enough yardage for a first down it looks like at about the 32. Ball carried by number 22, Caleb Richard for the Chargers. That time he was just following down. that big line of his. There wasn't much of a hole there, Coach, but they just kind of kept pushing him As back. As I say, he just, he finds a little bit. Of, sometimes he has a, what I call B-O-B, B-O-B, be your own blocker, B-Y-O-B. And he, he's, he's, he signifies that. First and 10 for the Chargers. Clock moving. Five minutes, 45 seconds left in this one. Cook splits to the near side. Stein to the far side. Richard, the lone setback. Marty letting the clock run down as much as he can. And the handoff to Richard finds a hole on the right side and then gets stood up at the 35 yard line. There, that play right there shows the greatness of Alec Marty. That snap was very high. And he's able to get it, catch it, bring it back down, and still hand it off while Caleb Richards running at full speed. Marty's no short guy. No, he's 6'2", uh, he's 180 pounds. And that's a legitimate 6'2". That's not a coach's 6'2". <laughs> 4.45 left in the game. Split backs this time with Marty. And again, letting the clock run down as low as he possibly can. Good snap this time, and Marty's going to keep it around the left side. Has a block on the outside, trying to turn the corner, but can't do it on good defensive effort by Central that time, as it was uh, Brendan Mulligan, who's done such a good job on offense tonight, making the good defensive play. So a little bit of a loss that time, back to the 34-yard line. And now the Chargers are going to face third down and eight. Well, you got to look at, again, Devontae Stein's been open so much, wide open. He's still open, even though we have the short sideline. The wide sideline is, is Mike Robb at the top, and really he has just single coverage out there. This time it's the handoff to Richard on the trickery, and Richard picks a hole and gets down to the 45-yard line for a first down. That's a behind-the-back draw. First time we've seen that tonight. Well, earlier in the game, we saw the fake of that, and Marty kept it and ran around the corner for a first down. Good play at a good time. Good play at a good time. Chargers have moved the ball to their own 45-yard line and have a first down with this 24-13 lead, and the clock moving three minutes, 40 seconds left in the ball game as Dow High heading for their sixth straight victory to start the season. Tough road ahead though, coach. Yep, it is. Davison is a reasonably good team, big, powerful team, very similar to Bay City Central. Caleb uh, Richard breaks one tackle and gets inside okay, Bay City Richard Central territory for a pickup of about seven yards. The eighth game against Saginaw will not be much Brings of a game. And, and then the ninth game is always a big game uh, against so Crosstown down. rival Midland High, who I think is getting better. 
Well, it could be uh, Midlands Bowl game, you know. It could be very well. It could be for, depending on what happens tonight against Carmen Ainsworth and next week against Lapeer, maybe for just simply a winning season. Second down and three for the Chargers at the 48-yard line. Here's Richard, it's, and a nice defensive play by Chris Jacobs, who's had a good ball game tonight from his defensive line position, and he got in there for the loss as it dropped Richard back to the 49-yard line of Dow and bringing up third and six. At first glance, Chris Richard just, or Chris Jacobs, I'm sorry, is uh, just looks like a big old kid out there, but he has made some defensive plays tonight, and of yes, course he he's, is. He's, a he's their punter player. also. He's a football player. Third and six for the Chargers. And the clock inside of two minutes now. And a timeout going to be called by Dow High with 141 left in the ball game. And timeout called by Dow Coach, High. Uh, That's a good timeout right there. I, I have to say it's third and long. He didn't like what he saw. He didn't like the play that was called. He called a timeout. He's a pretty smart kid. Good, good job. Of course, the uh, coaches haven't put this one in the win column yet, but uh, I think they're in pretty good shape. And uh, congratulations to Jason Watkins and his staff for this uh, great start. Uh, that they've had and a lot of momentum even though they didn't play their best game tonight uh, they came away with a hard fought victory it looks like you know though I think Basie Central did play their best game tonight uh, as I and again I, I looked at their scores against teams they beat Swartz Creek 58 to 43 they lost the Midland 31 15 they lost the Lapeer 48 nothing they beat Arthur a p very poor Arthur Hill team 41-18 and beat an equally poor Northwestern team 63-28. So they have had some games where they've been run out of there and some games where they've run other poor teams out of there. Tonight, they've played a great football game. And without a doubt, I think their best football game of the year. I I thought, well, they might be in trouble because I thought, okay, maybe Bay City Western will be able to take them. I don't think that right now. And, of course, they uh, feel about that game the same way Dow and Midland feel about their game. Oh, yeah. It's a big rivalry. Big, big rivalry. Here's Marty back to pass, looking downfield. Has a man. It's Stein on the near sideline inside the 45-yard line at Bay City Central. And looks like it'll be enough for a first down. Well, what do you think, Sid? Has Devontae Stein grown up tonight? Boy, he has had a huh? great ball game. Wish we had the stats in front of us to know how many catches he's made, but he's, regardless of how many, he's made some big ones. Six five, hundred ninety pound junior, and has been just right on the money all night. So easy, the catch is so easy. You know, some guys have. It's hard. You look at him, they catch the ball. Okay, that was great, but he's catching it so effortlessly. At the forty-two yard line, now it's up to Dow to just run out the clock. And get a out of here with his homecoming victory. Here's Richard getting outside, trying to get around the corner and still on his feet across the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20. Caleb Richard still on his feet and he is going to score. Strike up the band wow. with a fight song. Is that some kind of run? And if you look out on the field and it's you see uh, three. Uh, when we see the replay, you are going to be shocked at the number of missed tackles. Here it comes. And you can just see this is, he's waiting, he's waiting. It's a little draw play. An update on the middle of the high game. With one minute left to play, coming in for a 43 yard run. One, two, three. Here comes four. Four. Here comes five, right here, number 55. Six, seven, and that's it. That's as high as you can count hey, anyway. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to get into my toes. <laughs> Here's the point after. Wow. I was, was going to point out after the play, you could look down there and you could see three, yeah. uh, three wolves just laying there on the field. They had all taken a shot well, at him. And that was it. a tremendous run. That's a highlight run of highlight runs. 
So a 43-yard touchdown run by Caleb Richard. That ups the score to 31-13 with Max Kidd's point after. And uh, I think we can just about put the plug in the jug on that one. Well, Fight song's going. I Everybody's will, ready for homecoming now. I will say this. That game was, it's going to look at 31-13, and you're going to say, wow, Dow did it again. But I've got to say, Bay State Central has played a great game tonight, and this game was in doubt at that one point where it was third and, and they needed a first down, didn't get it, and now Dow just drove right back down the field and scored. Well, you know, you got to give a lot of, we talk a lot about the Dow offense, but we got to give a lot of credit to the defense tonight, especially in the second half. Second half has been fabulous. They have shut out the Wolves here in the second half. Here's Kidd launching another one down about the three yard line. And this is Anthony, Nathan Anthony, reversing his field now, trying to find some blockers on the outside across the 20, and it's going to be corralled at the 24. But with only a minute 10 left, not much Bay City Central can do at this point. You know, um, again, talking about Jason Watkins in his sixth year at Dow High School, I was talking to him earlier in the week, and I was asking him about uh, the major influences in his life, and he listed uh, Frank Altimore as one of those guys. But what really impressed me was not just about the coaching influence, but the classroom experience that he got from you and, and learned from you. And I thought that was a great tribute, not only well, to your coaching skills, but your teaching skills. Well, thank you. He was a, he was a great captain for us, and a, he was an outstanding center. And just tremendous leadership abilities, and he's shown it as a teacher and as a coach. He's an excellent math teacher and uh, a great family man. Great, great guy. And he said he loved math, and I said, well, what's up with that, coach? Math. He's a thinker. He's always been a thinker. His older brother, this is, you know, is on the sideline, right down in the middle. He, co he volunteer coaches for, for Jason, coaches their defensive line, does an excellent job. The dad's a former policeman. Mom is a former uh, school personnel. Boy, Zanotti pop just as he gets rid of it, and pass falls into the hand of one of his offensive linemen, Logan Goik. He did also, uh, just to let you know, you can probably know a couple of these other, you mentioned his brother Steve, but also uh, his uh, uh, colleague at Meridian, Larry Castle, is one of his uh, uh, great influences in his life. Well, so, Larry Castle coached with me at Dow High when Jason was there. He was, he's an excellent, he, he might be one of the, the best line coaches around. He's still coaching, and he's working at Meridian right now. He left me, went back to Midland because his children were going to Midland High. He didn't want to coach against his children. He uh, coached at Midland for a number of years, and then he went up uh, as friendship, went up to Meridian. His family's from the Meridian area. And he put Larry Castle played for me. He's, he was a tackle for me in in uh, 1906. <laughs> <laughs> we had leather helmets and no masks. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> Probably ran the single wing, didn't you? Heck no, we ran <laughs> uh, mud ball. You know, we shifted into the the old box formation. <laughs> Wolves move the chains on a first down at their own 38 now with 52 seconds left in the ball game. That was a good, very good run there. Here's Zanotti with the handoff, and this is Mulligan, and Mulligan finds some running room over the right side of the line, gets across the 45 to the 47, but the clock is on the move downward now. I really like that Mulligan. I think he's had a great game. Well, there's no quit in this team anyway. They're still trying to move the ball, and... Running hard. And they are going to move the chains on the far side as it was a first down. Homecoming night for the Chargers. Big win. Sometimes coaches worry about that just a little bit, about uh, how much the players' minds are on the game versus the 
homecoming festivities. Next week is parents' night, and Coach Watkins was thinking that his team will be very focused. You know, he wants to keep them focused on the moment and not be looking ahead too far as to what may be awaiting them on down the road. And he thought maybe a parents' night would be a good night that they would stay focused and want to play for their folks. That's uh, always a big night, parents' uh, night. Uh, parents get down on the field. They're quite proud. I, as a parent for both of my sons, I loved every minute of it. Here's Mulligan again, and look at this guy running. Boy, no give up in him, and now he fumbles the ball at the very end of the run. Looks like Dow has it as number 17 for the Chargers. Comes up with it, Eric Huss, who's this had a good a ball game fantastic tonight. Fantastic run. He gets up into the chute. He's running there. Great play there. Ball gets bounced out. Max Kidd made the tackle. And so that's just going to about do it for this ball game. 31.1 seconds left in the game. And Charger offense back out on the field. They'll have it at the 28 yard line. Coach uh, Morley Frazier over on the far side looking for his first winning season since 2007. It's been a long dry spell over there and his team's got a, a couple of tough games coming up to try and reach that goal of a winning season, but I'm pretty impressed with his program and what he's done tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. They got to play Mount Pleasant and they got to play Western. And um, can't think of who the other team is they're playing. Mount Pleasant will be a challenge for them. But uh, as I said, watching them tonight, I think they can beat Western. Victory formation for the Chargers. They are the victors. Homecoming will be wildly celebrated by the Charger faithful as they defeat the Bay City Central Wolves by a score of 31 to 13 here at Midland Community Stadium. And Coach, uh, it was a game of two halves. It was. The it first was. half, uh, boy, we thought uh, Bay City Central, it was gonna be their night maybe, but Dow High comes up with some offense and especially a good defense in the second they, half. They shut Bay City Central down, but you know what? Sid, I, I say this again, I think Bay City Central shut themselves down. In the first half, they had an awful lot of success running with two backs, quarterback under center, and just pounding it at Dow. In the second half, they went to the spread, they threw more passes than I thought they were gonna, and they ran more laterally than I thought they were gonna. And as a result of that, uh, Dow was able to do the job and, and win the football game convincingly. 31-13 is a convincing win. That's, uh, you know, well, you uh, can uh, win by the score, that score. And, and you didn't play well. And, you did, and did not play well, correct. And, you know, I think uh, I think you made a good point earlier in the ball game and earlier tonight in that uh, Dow really needed a game like this. Uh, you they don't did. need to be breezing through your whole schedule right. and get uh, way late at the end. You so. need to be challenged. It's the kind of game you need to have. Okay, we have some highlights to uh, finish off. These are uh, of the second half. This is the first play. This is the, I think the quarterback, yes, this is the quarterback sneak by Alex Marty. And watch how quick he is to get into that little slot. See, he just finds it, finds the open seam and goes. That's how, that's when Dow had been denied the uh, right. play before. It looked like they had scored. Right. And this is the, the, the trickery play into the end zone where is Dow it? is going to make easy interception. That was a fourth down play. This is the run by, yes it is. This is the run of runs where he leaves everybody in bases, including their cheerleaders as he's running by everybody. And this is just, this is just an incredible run. Loses his balance, loses everything, loses his chin strap, and runs wow. into the end zone. Fabulous. That's gonna be on a lot of highlight rolls. Oh yeah. 
at the end of the game. This is Dolligan's run, and he really does a good job of running. And then here's Kidd, hits him just as he's shifting the ball, and Dow gets it back. And that's, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. So 6 and 0 for the Dow High Chargers. 6 and 0, 3 to go. Start the season, and uh, I know Coach uh, Jason Watkins and his staff are ecstatic. Uh, players ecstatic and like we said they got a couple more games they got to think about but this could be a special season for the Chargers. We're hoping. Thank you Sid. Great job tonight. Appreciate it. Enjoyed being with you coach and again our final score here from Midland Community Stadium the Dow High Chargers 31 and the Bay City Central Wolves 13 for head coach Frank Altimore. This is Sid Allen saying thanks for being with us and we'll see you next time on MCTV.